พักไทยรักไทยนำนโยบายแล้วทำได้ทั้งสิ้นหนึ่งในโลกนี้ต้องพักสินนำไทยทั่วทิ้งมุ่งสู่จุดหมายโชคดีคนไทยทั้งชาติได้ผู้นำฉลาดพิสัยพัดควางไกลพักสินไม่ใช่เจ้านายแต่เป็นผู้รับใช้คนไทยทั้งแผ่นดิน Hello and welcome back. I'm here once again with. Good friend Gong. Gong, how do you do? Yeah, I'm good. How do you do? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm a bit stressed. Um, <laughs> a bit stressed. But, a bit stressed. Um, I'm always stressed. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I was just thinking, like, oh, we haven't spoken since the last uh, episode, but uh, we did that Gladio episode in Thai, right? Yeah, right. And I think the timing of that is really interesting. I don't know if the Gladio episode has been released uh, by the time this episode has been released. But there's a lot. I don't know if people know about what Gladio was. It was like a counter leftist secret program mm-hmm. um, by like the CIA and shit in Europe in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 50s. But uh, I see a lot of parallels between Gladio and some of the stuff that went down in the in the red shirt movement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Like when you're looking for these kind of like because what we're talking about is like infiltration of. People's movements by the state, right? Right. And um, and when you're looking for that kind of stuff, it's like sifting, panning for gold, right? You 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 try and see the little glints, and then I every now and then, reading through this red shirt stuff, I see little glints of like, oh, that was probably an <laughs> psyop or so infiltration or something. But we'll definitely get to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think I even said what we're talking about, which is of course uh, tax in part two, red shirt versus yellow shirt, and, mm-hmm. and actually we're probably not even going to talk about tax in that much in this mm-hmm. episode, right? Um, so I think this this war between the two factions really defined Thailand domestically and internationally for about a decade, right? I mean that was always what people knew about Thailand was oh you got that thing going on with the red shirts and the yellow shirts, you know, like mm-hmm. what's the deal with that, right? Um, it's you know, a we've sign. Got some time to pr- Yeah, <laughs> it's a sign of Thailand in 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 like in in the past two decades. Yeah, we. It's funny because like I I haven't really looked into it much since it kind of finished. Like I never really did a revisiting of it, and mm-hmm. I felt kind of I don't know. I felt like maybe I had kind of transcended it because I think I was quite emotionally invested in it at the time, you know. I've, and I think maybe I had transcended it in the past ten years or so. But you know, we were messaging like when I was watching back some of those videos, like. Mm-hmm. Oh, it got me emotional. Seriously, right. right? And I mean, just again on like an emotional level, like when I was watching the interviews, like immediately after and even during the siege in Bangkok, like mm. I found it to be very emotional. Like this was a real. I'm yeah. going to give the lead away to my next question, but this was a real proletarian struggle. <laughs> it turned out okay. to be anyway. So you know, there is my question, which you know is a uh, you know was the red shirt yellow shirt battle was that a class war? What, mm. what do you think? A class war, okay. Like, like, like from the past, they said like it's an urban rural conflict. Yeah, right. Like, like uh, people from from the rural area, yeah, and then try to you know like go and vote, and then people in the urban area try to destroy it, you know, and and mm-hmm. you know like later uh, from from Taksin onward, like like last time, uh, last episode we were talking about that Taksin makes uh, like empowering people from the rural. Makes them, mm. you know, like feel like there are more people than than like they are also a citizen. They're also people who yeah. can uh, eat, you know, get fed by the government, and then uh, to feel like the can, uh, the old I was elite say who can engage with parliament. Yeah, you can, you can engage, engage with, with them. the with the country, right? Yeah, well, yeah. like 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 that uh, radio, like Taksin talk to the people. You know, like a uh, uh, prime minister talk to the people, and he he's like. Like like talking live with the people, like updating the situation of the country, and then um, and the old elites, you know, like who's opposed taxing, feel like uh, these people are stealing my space, you know, stealing mm-hmm. the area of of engaging with with the country. So they don't like the people who is the uh, the uh, voter of Taksin. They they feel like why do these people have the right to to be in their yeah. place? So if 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 we're talking class like proletariat bourgeois, you know, like a, yeah. a entrepreneur and and working class fighting, yeah. maybe it's maybe it's not you know it, it's not a class okay. in that sense. But maybe if I put another words, is a social status war. 
you know interesting yeah like people working for the government people who feel like they are middle class they have more money and people who who live uh, in a rural area you know working in the agricultural sector you know how mm. how how do they describe as a citizen just like me you know so that that is that is some kind of conflict that that the yellow shirt which come from um, more more like uh, urban area with the people yeah. who's taxing water from from the rural area you know that that that's a that, i think that that's that's a conflict between maybe so-called class mm. Mm. so okay that's a, that's a kind of very long kind of uh <laughs> long-winded <laughs> way to say kind of mm-hmm. um, <laughs> i think for me i think when we can talk about the genget thesis later but mm-hmm. For me, I, I do see this as a class war. I think in the 21st century, we kind of maybe should expand our concept of class mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. little bit more. And if if you do do that, then yes, I, I and I think this developed into more of a class war mm-hmm, over mm-hmm, time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, let's let's kind of get into it, um, and then we can talk about it at the end, maybe. So so I think last time we kind of maybe got a bit ahead of ourselves when we, mm-hmm. we talked about oh and then the coup happened right yeah, in, yeah. The, in the last episode um so i think we have to really start by looking at the rise of the pad which was of course the people's alliance for democracy and this is how yeah the yellow shirts got started and this was really the force behind the coup that cooed out taxin um so how, how do you want to start i mean we could name some of the key players for example and then kind of you know go from there so of course you had like son t mm-hmm. uh, lim tong right lim tong kun. Oh, sorry tom kun um, <laughs> who you know i think we talked about him before on like the yeah. salim episode we did yeah um, yeah 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 right. real reactionary shithead um, yeah <laughs> you've got of course uh someone else we talked about on the last episode uh cham long the uh, politician yeah si Mung, the politician who actually gave tax in his start in government mm-hmm and um and then someone else who's quite interesting is uh some kiat pong pai boon mm-hmm. who was the guy from the assembly of the poor mm-hmm. who's that's an interesting story i mean maybe do you want to give a little background on like how this kind of alliance came together because you you were around i i yeah i i think it, the it they they were friends with taxin you know uh um, in the early days yeah yeah especially mr cham long and 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 mm-hmm. son t too you know son t he he was uh he was the like a a TV programmer, you know. Yeah, uh, he organized the TV. He he, he you know if if you can understand Thai, you you should try listen to him. You know, he speak, you know, he speak very clear and he has his rhythm. Anything you know, like he's but, kind of like a shock jock. Yeah, like yeah. like smooth. Yeah, you know, like very yeah. smooth. And 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 you you find it like oh you you're gonna believe this guy because of his character. You know, and yeah, and and back then, uh, and uh, like later, I think it's a kind of, uh, I think it's a problem inside Taksin administration too that that uh, his um, he takes more than more than giving, you know, mm. if if I would like to use this word that that he tried to get control of not only the parliament but the whole bureaucratic system of Thailand. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that, that there's a. Mm-hmm. I was going to say it kind of uh, reminds me of like uh, the way like a mafia boss has to keep his like lieutenants underneath him happy. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and he took too much for himself. Right. I and, guess is how they saw it. Yes. And if it's a mafia, he, he, he does not only keep his lieutenant, but he uh, will go further into another family and try to mm. buy people from another family but let them stay there you know like you you're my guy and you give me information you know something like that you know uh, like so i mean really there was the the bust up in terms of the leadership who started the pad was really a an internal dispute among the ruling class yes yes you could say that and you then, could say that yeah and then the way i see it is that ruling that segment of the ruling class who broke with taxin mm-hmm. then started to rally this kind of 
uh, this, well, I want to call it Salim style support. I don't know what else to call it in that, at the time. This kind of like, yeah, right wing anger that we talked about a lot already about, you know, yeah. empowering that rural working class who was so despised by the urban elite. And uh, that's kind of how they started to rally this movement against taxing, right? Starting in around, what was that? 2004, yeah, 2005. I guess. Yeah, 2004, 2005. Yeah. I think back then at that time, they were reasonable. And, and Tuxin was not acting so good at that time, you know, like, uh, like, uh, like we said, like we have the 1997 constitution, uh, that mm-hmm. uh, so-called the most democratic constitution Thailand have ever, or, or whatever you call that, that they will empower the political party, you know, like uh, makes it uh, with the majoritarian electoral system that makes mm-hmm. only two party, um, only two strong party in the parliament makes that the government mm-hmm. have more stability or whatever, you know, and, and it has more uh, uh, like check and balance system with the independent organization. Uh, and then Chuxin, you know, somehow try to control the ind- independent organization that where the problem start, you know. Right. Like, yeah. So that's why people think that it is not fair, you know, like people, PAD, the alliance group have every right to think that, okay, this is not fair. It, it is actually not fair for everyone. Uh, mm. A lot of civil servants likes him, especially police officer, because he was mm. the former police officer and he gives a lot of welfare to the police. You know, like, okay, yeah. it, it, it's like, it's like it, it mostly like today, like, like, uh, uh, our, our current prime minister tried to treat his, his uh, military and soldier because he's a former yeah. soldier too, you know, something like that, you know, like uh, it, it's quite the same. And I think mm-hmm. I was just going to say like as well that there there are a lot of people who got sick of taxing, which in, as well included some of the old comrades that yeah. we mentioned in the last episode. As sure, well. sure, sure. And and yeah, and, and, and they were right, you know, if they were fighting for democracy, they were fighting for equality, this is totally injustice for for. for 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 taxing for for what he did to to the country back then at that time so like uh you know like like after that the the election the, the second term of his run as a prime minister you know he even get more uh MPs mm-hmm. to be in the in the parliament like the the single party the gov- single party government and then after that the the third election uh which happened in 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 2006 oh. you know like he yeah. he has more than 300 you know 377 something like like much enough that the opposition cannot have the uh, uh, non-confidential, you know. They, they they can't do shit. They basically. can't do anything, you know. Like so. So, mm, so, so, so I think that that, that kind of explains to a degree how the old comrades broke with him, as well as the assembly of the poor as mm-hmm. well, who were that was a assembly of the poor is still actually a, a kind of alliance of NGOs that were typically helping with, you know, working class issues. Right? Some, some of them call um, themselves a labor union. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they, they really got <laughs> absorbed by the right wing. It's, it's a weird story. <laughs> um, but, you know, let's, we need to talk about, like, what officially were the complaints of the PAD. And oh, also one more thing is that, like, the, the PAD, I think they were, after a while, they got tied pretty bloody closely to the Democrat Party, right? Yes, yes. A, a lot of yeah. Democrat Party's member and MP, they, they joined the protest. Yeah. They, with, with so the, so yeah, just, the, just briefly, the, the Democrat Party, the long-time opposition to Thai Rak Thai, they were, I don't know, they, it, you know, most countries have a party like this, a centri- center-right conservative party. In Thailand, of course, they're all devout monarchists as well, you, mm-hmm, you can mm-hmm. imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they weren't, also, people may know the kind of yellow shirts nowadays. I think back then, they in the in the mid taxing era, let's say, they weren't nearly as radical, kind of like feudalists almost as they are nowadays. They were still kind of <laughs> they still believed in democracy in a sense, in a kind of twisted way. Mm-hmm. But they just they wanted their own style of democracy where people in Isan don't vote. Basically, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I'm oversimplifying, of course. But, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's kind of the general thesis um, of mine. But um, so I think the the in terms of what the PAD were publicly complaining about, a lot of it was like you mentioned ICE about, you know, taxing has too much control. He's taking over the uh, the civil service too much. But also, you know, there was a lot of complaints about cronyism, vote buying. I think the cronyism stuff is interesting because, you know, show me a Thai prime minister who hasn't been a crony guy who gives positions to his mates. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's absurd. It's everyone's like that. Right. Um, 
And in terms of vote buying, again, like we kind of talked about this last time, like it may have happened in some areas, but I, I, or maybe it did, you know, but I think it's kind of almost irrelevant because they won by such a huge degree that I don't know. Where, where are you on vote buying? Uh, I think, I think it's uh, may, maybe um, nobody has a tangible, you know, like evidence of, of vote buying. Right. You know, so so that's why that's why that's why the uh, the election committees or you know the law cannot do anything about it. And some of the uh, like a uh, like a uh, uh, small D Democrat academic would say mm-hmm. that you know there there's no vote buying anymore. You know, it's a fake news. It's a illusion. Mm-hmm. But you know, like uh, there are vote buying. You know, I would say that it. it oh, it's, I am. 100% sure that a certain political party that I can't name or else I might get sued for defamation <laughs> which currently exists in Thailand which is certainly not a red shirt party mm-hmm. does vote buying because I know people personally <laughs> who have been offered money for their vote I'm just saying yeah I, um, I just say that there's, there's been talk like uh yes every party has 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 done vote buying not because they they want to win by exchanging money, but uh, some people would say that it is inside Thai political culture. You know, like, right. yeah, some some people. You know, I I went to uh, I went to a barber shop. You know, once when I was a kid, and then I heard that the barber talking to his wife on husband to his wife on the phone, saying that like, uh, do they have a money for us? You know. And then oh. he, his wife said that, oh, it doesn't matter because we are, we're going to vote them anyway. And the barber <laughs> said like, yes, we are voting them anyway, but this is my question. Do they have money for us? <laughs> you know, like they don't care. Okay. If, if yeah. the other party pay, you know, they don't care and they take the money. And, and they, they still vote for, they they still vote vote for, for them. They still vote for them in the first yeah. place. So yeah. uh, maybe can you call it vote buying? Maybe. Yeah, I see what yeah. you're saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but it, it's inside a Thai political culture. Mm-hmm. But I want to. But I think this was really seized upon by the PAD as being like an explanation for why the rural peasantry voted for Taksim. So mm-hmm. I have this mm-hmm. great quote from the Nation, mm-hmm. which is a newspaper, mm-hmm. very right wing newspaper in Thailand. <laughs> um, and this is from an editorial, and uh, I can't remember who wrote it. I've just got the quote. I'm sorry. It says a uh, quote. In a less developed democracy like ours, in which the impoverished, poorly informed masses are easily manipulated by people of his ilk, Taksin's mm. manipulation has been well documented. So there was <laughs> that really sums it up for me. Like there was this conception that, like, oh no, Taksin is just manipulating these poor, uninformed, ignorant, stupid peasants. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, and they don't know what's good for them. Mm. You know, it is this very urban kind of mm-hmm. conception yeah, of, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. of the peasantry, right? Yeah. Maybe not a vote buying, but but maybe uh, like MP buying. You know, like like not yeah, buy yeah, after, yeah. like 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 here, like uh, the the current the current uh, government party, they use the word like sucking. You know, like sucking mm. from 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 the old area, like uh, people from Pua Thai. There was a Pua Thai party member and was the MP, and then they. they they pull it in, into their party, you know, like Taksin mm. does that strategy when, when, when he was uh, the prime minister back then in 2001, you know, like, yeah, they, everybody uses, you know, like not illegal, you know, but politically, you know, like mm. it's, it depends on what, what, what your perspective on this, you know. So I think just back to the PAD, I mean, they really, the, these protests, they kind of, against taxing they kind of built and built and built in 2005 2006 they grew and they grew and remember that the PAD is incredibly popular their their base is really Bangkok so mm-hmm. it was pretty easy for them to get people out into places where the media are going to pay attention yeah a lot of them have friends in the media a lot of people in the media are PAD <laughs> supporters mm-hmm. so they really they really grew and 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 kind of exploded politically and I mean, really, they, they, they were charging him with pretty much any bad thing you can possibly imagine. Like, they really saw him as a devil incarnate. I mean, you know, corruption, authoritarianism, mm. treason, conflicts mm. of interest. Mm-hmm. I've got a little list here. Mm-hmm. You know, this uh, acting non-diplomatically. I don't know what that one was relating to. Mm-hmm. Like, muzzling of the press, tax evasion, les, les majesté. Yeah. Like, 
like a- anything, anything you can possibly think of, they charged him with it. Mm-hmm. Not not in the court. I'm saying like yeah. publicly, like they called him out for pretty much every single move he did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's basically how the coup happens, um, which we briefly discussed yeah. in the in the last episode. So, yeah, like we said, um, Taxin, he's sitting in a hotel room in New York watching television, <laughs> watching himself get cooed on television <laughs> or his government getting kicked out. Um, so I guess we should probably talk about what happened immediately after the coup. Mm-hmm. So, of course, the constitution is suspended. Uh, the government is dissolved, which is uh, both Houses of Parliament and the Constitutional Court as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, General Sonti, like we said, announces he's in charge now. An- another he Sonti. Said that, <laughs> yes, sorry. Gen- <laughs> this is General Sonti. Right? Yeah, another um, Sonti. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, you know, lets everyone know that King Bumipon has endorsed him as the head of this interim governing council. And, you know, the, the coup is a well-played... A well, you know, everyone knows how to do a coup in Thailand. It's happened plenty of times before, yeah, you know, it's right, kind, of, right. kind of routine. Yeah, yeah. Since, since the 1932 revolution, followed yeah. by another yeah. coup, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it's a normal, uh, maybe another Thai political culture. <laughs> maybe you mm. could say that. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. So um, he, he, he promises to restore democracy in mm. a year's time and that he's going he's gonna to declare a civilian interim leader. Mm-hmm. And, you know, naturally as well, this came with media censorship again. Mm-hmm. This is the Thai coup playbook. Mm-hmm. Um, and, oh, yeah, so the, and I want to mention, like, at first there weren't so many protests because the military really got their guys out on the streets and made it very clear, like, hey, you know, don't, mm-hmm. don't protest this. Yeah, or, yeah, you know, right. The tanks were out, literally. Um, and so the Constitutional Tribunal, I think it was called. Uh, oh, wait, actually, before I get to that, I just want to mention, Tyrak Thai Party, they know that it's about to get dissolved, so a bunch of MPs resign, jump mm-hmm. ship, and then, of course, it does get dissolved. Mm-hmm. And the reason they jump ship was so that they don't get banned from politics later on, and this becomes important. Later yeah, but, on, but, but right? lots of them, uh, uh, mm-hmm. the uh, 100, uh, allow a, around 100 and, and, and some numbers of, of them has been banned five years because... Uh, there, there were yep. a committees of the Thai Lak Thai Party, yep. but at, at that time, you know, like and 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 later on, it, it becomes like a tradition that when you dissolve a party, yep. you you will need to ban the committees from yep. from from the politics from at least five to ten years, you know, yep. which like happened to the parties, yeah though. yeah it happened to future yep. forward, which is totally not fair, <laughs> you know, like no, of course, what what, what the hell, but, like yeah. how does it okay. relate? This is we, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, also, of course, Taksin had his uh, assets uh, frozen and what have you, as you would imagine. Um, so there's also a couple of curious things about this coup. I think one interesting thing is the financing of it, you know, about this. So the the junta, they, they basically had a secret coup fund, yes. which is interesting, right? Because yeah. did we know about the secret coup fund before this coup or did that kind of... Uh, I think people were 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 interested like after after the coup, like uh-huh. you know, like uh, back then, you know, like before the coup, everybody was like, you know, like the, it's a good economic, you know, people don't really care much about politics, but they they do have a view on politics again when Taksin got too much power, and then they joined right. the PAD, and then like maybe right right after the coup, they were like, okay, we we get the happiness back, you know, like we. We delete the evil from the equation, you know, like back then at that time, like all elites and middle class agree that we need to get rid of toxin no matter what, mm. you know, like we, we, we try to uh, boycott the election, you know, like the Democrat well, Party. We'll get to that. Yeah. We'll and then like they, they and, and then they create every condition for the coup, yeah. which make no exit point for, for Thailand. So the last answer yeah. will be the coup, you know, like like so. So. Uh, so, like later, a little bit later, uh, the the fun was was declared by by a magazine, you know, like same sky book, you know, which is really famous. I mean, just 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 to be clear, like mm-hmm. coups cost money. Yeah, it so costs money. You need to have like a little a little bank account with yeah. a good couple bi- billion baht yeah. in case you want to do a coup, right? Yeah, <laughs> so but before that, nobody cares. About. But but like right yeah. after the people who 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 is a reaction for the coup, you know, they try to mm. dick it in. You know, that, that's how. So, 
you know, I mentioned that there weren't really any protests mm-hmm. immediately after the coup. And I also mentioned Gladio at the beginning of this episode. Yeah. And we got to talk about the two fa- the, the 2006 Bangkok New Year's Eve bombs, right? You knew I was going to bring it up. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a real bizarre mm-hmm. thing if you want to look into it. So, mm. oh. bombs went off in 2006 on New Year's Eve. Uh, so, this would be like, yeah, December 31st. So, very not that long after the coup. Uh, nine locations in Bangkok. Only three people died, although 42 were injured. And um, I definitely know what my theory is on this, but I'm wondering about yours. Who did the bombs? No, I, 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 I don't have any theory. Oh, of course not. Um, <laughs> of course not. All I will suggest <laughs> is uh, look into Gladio. Mm. You know, I mean, let's just let's put it this way. If you've got a uh, military coup, a military junta who's just taken power, who are incredibly unpopular, mm-hmm. who need a reason to justify having a strong and powerful military government in power, well, I guess it would probably help if there happened to be, you know, a bit of a uh, threat to the country, shall we say. Ah, so. mm. Mm. interesting. Well, yeah, well, yeah. So, so if you want to be a hero, you have to create a villain. Is that something yeah. like that? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll let people figure out. I think we've been pretty fucking explicit, but whatever. Um, so this kind of leads to the formation of the... Oh, wait, actually, let me, let me pull back a little bit. The term yellow shirt, when did this actually get started? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, so, so I think the, the origin of the red shirt... Uh, no, no, sorry. The, the origin of the yellow shirt... Uh, thing that has been popular in Thailand was was in the Thaksin time of being a government. You know, he as a prime minister said that you should wear a yellow shirt on Monday because the mm. color from Monday is yellow, you know, and it's a tribute to uh, uh, the late king at that time that uh, his, he was born on Monday, so his color mm. would be uh, yellow too. So in order to pay respect to him, you know, uh, in, in, in the uh, uh, anniversary of his reign, 60 years, you know, like a very big celebration yeah. of, in Thailand and, and Thaksin organized it. And he, he thinks that uh, we should celebrate it for like wearing a yellow shirt uh, every Monday or every day if you can, you know, and... Yeah. and uh, this was particularly prominent in the civil service, right? Yeah, it's it's. I think it's uh, mandatory for for the civil service. Oh, it, yeah, it definitely is now. I'm not sure about back then, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, like like you you wear it on Monday, but the other day you you may you know like oh with, with the uh, with the sign of of of, of yeah. the king, you know, like uh, the yellow shirt, and then like and then two years later it becomes another symbol for the protest you know like well you can see how it morphed right you know they're wearing the yellow shirts for the monarchy and they a big charge was taxing is anti-monarchy mm. and they saw themselves as defenders of thailand which means defenders of the monarchy so of course they're going to wear the shirt which represents the monarchy right mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Some, something so. like that you know you know, it's just a bit of a like delicious that. irony that Taksin yeah. <laughs> originated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He Taksin always said that he he's always respect the monarchy. Yeah. Mm. Well, he course. he said um, he's always a royalist. Yeah. So so how did the the red shirts get started in that case? I mean, we can talk about the UDD. What what came first, the red shirts or the UDD? Uh, I think the term UDD came first. Uh, so the UDD is the United Front for Democracy Against Dictatorship, and this was the official name of the kind of red shirt yeah. group. But 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 this like they're, one they're counter to the PAD. Yeah, uh, the the first is not. Uh, it, it was called Nao Luom Prajatipatay Tao Tan Pradekan Eng Chan. It's not not catchy. Not 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 you know, in 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 Thai. Uh-huh. But but at first they were not Boko. There were there were different letters. You know, but back then mm. with, with the Nobuko, they don't wear red shirt. They 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 were a group called uh, you know anti you know dictatorship something that wear white shirt on 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 Saturday. Mm. You know, uh, yeah. in in Sanam Luang, you know, right. Where when when uh, those generals were in the power, but but later on uh, when when the coup finished and and have the election, you know, like the new constitution, two thousand seven constitution. Uh, wow. Samak Sun uh, become the prime minister by winning the election 
within yeah. the you're skipping ahead yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like that so so the red shirt comes after the second wave of the yellow shirt okay mm -hmm. right so i'm i was the one skipping ahead i mm -hmm. apologize so but you know this is a good time to talk about the formation of uh, PPP, mm -hmm. which we're doing too many acronyms, I know, apologies mm -hmm. listeners, but PPP was the new version of Tyrak Ty, basically, People's yeah. Power Party. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was literally just, just Tyrak Ty with a different name, <laughs> a different logo. Yeah. This, this is gonna happen a lot, so get used to it. Um, and, you know, then there were elections in 2007. Um, and I, I think it's important that we introduce Apiset at this point because he becomes an important guy so abby said was the head of the democrat party who we've mentioned before who generally speaking you know pretty unpopular very popular within areas of bangkok and mm. other the south and some central thai areas but generally a nation nationwide a pretty unpopular party who are never really going to win an election mm -hmm. um and abby said was the head of the party He's an interesting guy. He was uh, he was born in England. Good friend of Boris Johnson's, the current UK Conservative Prime Minister. They actually went backpacking in Thailand together when they were teenagers. They went to um, Eton together. Yes, they went. To, yes, that's a good point. Actually, yeah, yeah he they went, went to, to Eton to, together. Uh, they went to Eton together. He went to Oxford, study yep. uh, PPE, philosophy, politics, uh, economics. You know, I mean, he's a real like. Tory party, like Apisit, I'm talking, is like yes. Tory party guy, like conservative, UK conservative, like more more than British itself, you know, like more yeah, than yeah. British Man, like himself. watching, <laughs> yeah, like watching interviews with him in English is like horrifying to me to see like <laughs> ostensibly a Thai guy who's just like a cut and paste English Tory, like it's, <laughs> it's truly horrifying. Good description. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, no, who who in fucking Thailand is gonna vote for a guy like like actually vote for a guy like this? As in like, as if a guy like this is gonna win a fucking general election ever? No, no. <laughs> for me, the thing that always struck me with Apiset is that like, again, he's a UK conservative, which means, and this is maybe a bit confusing to our non-UK listeners, but. He'll just be a guy who does the job of being prime minister. He doesn't necessarily have any ideologies. He just knows who his supporters are and mm. he will serve them. Mm. That's mm. what mm. the point. UK Conservative Party post factor has been. And that was very much who Apisit was, right? Good point. Good point. Yes, yeah. I, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. When, when, when he gets a chance, you know, spoiler alert, he, he'll get a chance to be a prime minister yeah. later. And, and, and that's what he does. Exactly. That's what he did. Um, but, you know, we're back in 2007 mm -hmm. and um, really, let's face it, it's proxy season in mm -hmm. terms of uh, who's going to replace tax in, in mm -hmm. the new Tyrak Thai, the PPP, People's Power Party. Mm -hmm. And so the first guy was uh, this guy, Samak Suntarawet, who, I mean, you know, let's face it, he, he was a proxy for tax in. Yeah. I mean, so what? Of course, he's going to be a proxy for tax in. He was a um, Bangkok governor. Yeah. FYI. But, um, <laughs> but we don't need to go into depth about him. Yeah. I mean, he didn't uh -huh. last very long. He was there for yeah. about a year. I think he got done on, he got kicked out or by the constitutional court, right? Yeah, he I got, think. The thing that, that he, for... he, he likes cooking, you know, he likes cooking. So he, he has a program, he had like TV program, he cooked and then like uh, broadcasting out, you know, like by the uh -huh. time before he became the prime minister. And once he became... Uh, the prime minister. what does he get kicked out for though yeah because the constitutional court said that uh he was the employee uh no no sorry he he was the employees of some corporates which is violate the constitution and you because know because of his cooking show yeah because of his cooking show he got <gasps> he gets money from the corporate right. that's wrong you know like and then he, he was like you know he, he he tried to fight it he has uh lawyers or something and and and, and then uh, and from what I know, the 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 law doesn't doesn't say that it is uh, violate. You know, like right. it is not it is not clear that he is wrong in this case. But the okay. constitutional court, you know, they put out the dictionary <laughs> to translate right. the word employees, and then they try to you know like 
try to interpret it. They'll get you, you know, this is a thing about Thai law yeah. we talked about with Tyrell Habercorn before, which yeah. you can really use it to do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Right. So so it's like, okay, so kick uh, Samak out. He, he so always he's been in the, in, I, in the office for like seven, seven months. Yeah, and I didn't, I don't think I actually mentioned, like he did legitimately win the election in 2007. Yeah. Um, not by as much of a margin mm-hmm. as Taksin did at all, but still, you know. Yeah, and, and, and that constitution was uh, the electoral system were uh, proportional, you know, mm. not, not like majoritarian. I, I'll tell you a little bit about the different, like uh, it's proportional, uh, they will get more parties into the parliament, you know, not, not, not like first past the post, not like whoever got much wins. Yeah, it's like more you know? about coalition building. Basically. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, uh, and, and then I, I think we should mention that before Samak got kicked out, uh, there were a protest by the second wave of the yellow right. shirt. Yeah. Wait, uh, hold on. Isn't this um, the next guy who really got hit by the protest harder? Um, Som Chai Wong Sawat? Yeah, Som Chai Wong Sawat, who is the brother-in-law of Taksin. Yeah. Can we mm-hmm. talk about the PAD with him? Because I think it's a bit more dramatic. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, like you said, the, the you know, reactivate the PAD mm-hmm. after they did their job of getting rid of Taksin. Um, big protests once again, using mm-hmm. the same model that they used against Taksin, mm-hmm. you know, accusing the prime minister in, in uh, previously, uh, Samak, like we mentioned, accusing him of literally every single charge under the sun and getting him on a little technicality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the same uh, for Somchai uh, Wong Sawat, who replaced him, like you said, uh, Taksin's brother-in-law. So, you know, proxy season, um, <laughs> whatever. Um, and this is when it really hots up with the PAD. I mean, they stormed the prime minister's office, right? Yes. This, this is under Somchai, right? Uh, before, it was in, 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 in the office of Mr. Samak first. Oh, you know, my they, bad. Okay. They, they, they raid into the, uh, the, the government house. You know, like yeah, and, and they occupied it for yeah, a and they long occupied period it. of time. Yeah, they they live there. You know, they they sleep yeah. there. So uh, uh, the government has to find another place to to have a meeting, and then like uh, once uh, Som Chai comes into power, he needs to declare his policy in in the parliament, and those prote- uh, yellow shirt protesters were you know like protests in front of the uh, the parliament. Talk um, about anti-democratic. Yeah, but, um, not not was it was it mm-hmm. Samak who had to run away and he had to like climb over a fence to avoid them or something funny like that. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. Samak is very old. Okay. I, I don't think he climbed. Okay, anything, maybe but, it was Somcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but but there, there were like a you know like a, a fight you know between the police and they they have the tear gas to the protester yeah. to to uh, need to get the. Prime Minister Som Chai into the parliament to uh, declare the, uh, the policy or whatever, you know, like, and then like the, the, he's been accused for killing um, the people because one of the protesters has died from, from that even like in front of the parliament, uh, the yellow shirt protest by the bomb, I mean, you again, know, by the grenade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, red. again, we'll see the irony of that when the red shirts come out in force later. Right. But um, yeah, also, by the way, you said the government found a new location they had to be in. That location was Don Mueang Airport. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, oh, yeah, that, speaking of airports, there was also the attack on Suvanapum, right? Like uh, Som Chai was coming back from abroad and PAD just like broke into Sawanapum Airport, which is the biggest airport in Bangkok, and just trashed it. And it was a brand new airport at the time yeah. as well. So it was a very big deal. And I think it was Taxin also had something to do with building it. Yeah. So maybe there was... You know, it's been revenge. like a 50-year-long project, the Sawanapum Airport. He opened it. I don't know. No, he didn't open, but but he he's the uh, one who managed it to get finished, but he got cooled right. out first. And then like, you know, ah. uh, it's been open later in, in the military government. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think yeah. So they, it, they, it's they like a like, sign of the taxonomics, you know. So the, yeah, the yeah. yellow shirt needs to like occupy it and smash it and trash yeah, it. And, yeah, you know, yeah. like and they, they were like roaming around the airport. Like, yeah, yeah, they stay there for like it. a few days, you know, and it yeah. it caused a lot of a lot of you know economic crash because like uh, people yeah. from aboard cannot land a plane and you know they have yeah. to like change the flight and everything like chaotic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, um, of course, you can probably see this coming. Uh, Som Chai didn't last very long. He got mm-hmm. kicked out by the Constitutional Court. Yeah. That was for vote buying, for sure, if I remember. Yeah, three months. He, he, he was only yeah. been in the office for three months. And then vote buying, not, 
not from 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 him but from some MP uh, in some you know like some province only one case yeah. and then there were yeah. like vote buying thing and then like they tried to get him out uh, by dissolving the party the PPP party the Palang right and party. this is important because this is how Apusit's dream finally comes true. <laughs> and basically by default, he becomes prime minister because mm. PPP have been dissolved. And so there's nothing left but Apusit. And even still, he has to make a coalition, which is kind of funny, you know. Um, so, OK, Apusit is prime minister. Happy days for him. His, you know, dream of basically, you know, if you're an Eton boy, this is what you've been working for yeah. your whole fucking life. And it's like they, uh, the, Demo- the Thai Democratic Party, not even the biggest party in the parliament back then, you know, like yeah. uh, they, they, they know the strategy that they will, uh, they will ban the uh, uh, party's committee once it's dissolved. So now the PPP party, they don't put much people like in the Thai Lak Thai party like a hundred yeah. people like now there were only a few like 10 or 20 people so uh some of them were were banned and then uh 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 the groups like the factions inside the ppp party uh they decided to move away from the party and support a piece of, that's that makes the coalition that make the majority. This is people like people like Ne Win, right? Yes, yes. Uh, Ne Win's yeah. group. So, so just just to get a little sense of these kind of people, because it does kind of make sense, you know, like they had their they put their money on taxin and this this that taxin coalition, mm-hmm. right? And after they'd seen that, no, the institutional powers of Bangkok, which are represented by the like you know publicly seen as a PAD, they will not rest. They're, the Taksin's movement is a losing horse mm. because the, the institutions will never really allow a Taksin alliance to control Thailand mm. for an extended period right. of time. Yeah. So we'll just put our money on Apisit because there's no one else. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. It gives you a sense of these people. And Nay Win, he's still in power. He's it was not still in power. He's still in politics, and he's still like this. You know, these guys don't change. Yeah, he, he um, still likes real nineties throwbacks. Yeah, power in football. You know, he likes football. Yeah. and then uh, well, I, we'll I think get into, we'll get into power in football. Yeah, right? don't yeah, and, and yeah, it's interesting for what you said. Like uh, anyway, they they have to get rid of the Taksin's clan. Right, so yeah. that that's why they have to they have to move into the other clan. Like, and now the mm-hmm. uh, uh, the Thai Democratic Party led by Apisit was was the biggest opposition, and 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 uh, Ne Win was was the uh, was the member of Thaksin's party. But once it's mm-hmm. been dissolved, they can say that oh, I'm not committed to this new party, the Pur Thai one. You know, they yeah. they're not committed to this one. They commit to the old one, and the old one was dissolved. So I have every right to to move to to change. Yeah. You know, like. And then they 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 have the new party called uh, Pum Jai Thai, right? And yeah, it, it, which it is was, still around. Yeah, which is still yeah. around, and it's been established, and it becomes like kind of powerful party because they have negotiation yeah. power. They're kingmakers. Yeah, 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 something like that. So, um, so it, it, uh, it, I just want to yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it it makes the uh, social status middle and elite class in Bangkok happy. That uh, they can they can uh, bring Apisit into power instead of Taksin's clan, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, but you know who it doesn't make happy is the UDD, mm-hmm. who now are really starting to activate, and this was when we really see the red shirt movement kick mm-hmm. into gear. Mm-hmm. So the first mass red shirt rally, and I think at this point we can call it red shirts. I don't I don't actually know why they adopted red as a colour. Was that because of the PPP logo or something like that? I don't remember. I think it's because they believe that if you want to oppose yellow, it has to be by red, you know, and, and there's okay. a belief in, in, in Thai that, you know, like red is a colour of power or something. You know, and I'm not sure that Taksin was born on Sunday. Maybe. Yeah. Should look sure. into that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway. Um, yeah. So they're wearing red now, the UDD as a signifier. Their first mass rally, we're talking about 100,000 people. This is in April 2009 protesting mm-hmm. uh, Apisit, I guess. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Um there are also other shirts that I just quickly want to mention, which would be like this pink shirt, white shirt stuff. You, you've actually already mentioned the white shirts a little bit. <laughs> kind of like, we mentioned them in the last episode, this kind of 
Thai kind of Buddhist conception. It's kind of like of the Gandhi Buddhist ilk, you could kind of say, which is like, oh, just be chill, guys, and don't pay attention to anything. That seems to be their ideology of the white shirts. Like, they fucking suck. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the pink shirts, though, the pink shirts are really interesting to me. Mm-hmm. So they, they were... This, this is going to sound weird, but the yellow shirts weren't intrinsically tied to the monarchy, but the pink shirts very much were, although there weren't many pink shirts, right? But the, the, the people who wore pink were like, I just want the king to be happy. That's all I care about. I don't care about anything else. You can watch interviews with these people. It's very interesting. I, all this yeah. fighting, all this fighting, it's going to make the king sad. You don't want to make the king sad. Let's just all get along so that he can be happy. He loves us so much. He doesn't want to see us fight. Mm-hmm. And you know what's really fascinating to me? is that that's what the yellow shirts are now. The yellow shirts morphed into that ideology. They're basically feudalists now. The pink mm. shirts were the feudalists at the time. Mm-hmm. And now the current yellow shirts are yeah, basically just feudalists. And we can get into how that change happened. And we talked about it before on a previous episode, but mm-hmm. I think it is interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, very interesting you call them feudalists. But yeah, but, but because uh, the, 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 the color of, of, of yellow has been taken into a political account and people who don't want to be, you know, messed with those conflict well let's say parliamentary political not political right yeah 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 yeah, something like that you know back back then i i would want i I wouldn't wear uh yellow or red you know back then in 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 2007 2008 because like if you wear something like that about people we're like oh are you red shirt are you yellow and then more than that if you wear red you know there's more risky chance that you'll get kicked on the street yeah because there were there were like i don't know paramilitary is kind of a strong word um they, were, they, actually, they actually were like paramilitary groups but more commonly they were kind of just like i don't know informal groups of you know village guys who mm-hmm. were yellow shirts who would kick the shit out of someone wearing a red shirt or something mm-hmm. like that like it did and, and vice versa maybe a little bit i think it definitely came a lot more from the yellow shirts and i'm mm-hmm. not just being a biased guy mm-hmm. um so anyway um i think we should check in with taxin you know like mate what you've been up to during this time? Um, so I, I don't think we mentioned he he's so but there's you know this whole raft of court cases against him blah 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 since he got cooed out. He at first he did come back to Thailand and said he was going to fight them in the court blah blah blah. Eventually he just gave up and was like fuck this I'm never going to get a fair trial I'm leaving Thailand I'll come back one day we'll see he hasn't yet um, but he follows his dream. You know, mm-hmm. he always wanted to own a Premier League football club. Yeah. So he, he buys Manchester City <laughs> um, in 2007. Um, now, I think we really need to do a deep dive on his transfer policy at Man City. Wh- wh- so. Which team are you, uh, are you cheering? Which team are you support? Oh, I'm an Arsenal guy. Yeah, if you buy Arsenal, you would like him, right? Wait, how do you mean? Like, if, if he bought Arsenal oh. back then... Like, how would you feel? Like, would no, he be your hero? No, man, because <laughs> you don't want to, you want me to get into like Arsenal ownership history? Like, <laughs> no, later. Because it's, I'm happy to. Okay, <laughs> I just want to say like, 2000, well, no, this, you're making it right. The point you're making though is that mm-hmm. like, he was one of the first like mega rich, mm-hmm. you know, foreign owners to come into the Premier League. So the Man City fans at the time were like, because um, the Chelsea had just done the same. Um, and, and the Man City fans were like, oh, yeah, goody, we get like a foreign billionaire who's going to give our club a shitload of money. Mm-hmm. And he did, you know, I mean, he let Sylvain Distin go on a free, which was a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he brought in Vincent Company. He brought in Rubinho, spent mm-hmm. a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, although Rubinho didn't have much of a season, but he did do well at Milan afterwards. So, you know, um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, it didn't last. I mean, his assets have been frozen. He was having horrific financial trouble. Um and he was forced to sell City after about a year. Mm. So, you know, that was a fun little escapade for him, though. Mm. So, you know, good for him. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just generally, he was like chilling out in London, New York, Dubai, kind of like pulling some strings, you know, let's be honest. Uh, yeah, and he got a Montenegro citizenship. Oh, shit, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can buy citizenship in Montenegro, right? Yeah, so, you can buy it in the UK. Wait, you can actually just buy it? No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but like... Legally. Okay, cut this part out. I don't want. He definitely I, I, would have if he could. I, I have. still need to go to study PhD, man. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Oh. Um, so, okay, what was I saying? So yeah, he got the Montenegro citizenship. Um, 
but yeah, generally he's just kind of abroad, like yeah, you know, being. He, oh yeah, also he would um, address a lot of red shirt rallies often through video. Mm-hmm. You can see a lot of videos of him on the big screen, going yeah. from some boardroom to a big crowd of people in Isan. You know, yeah, video link. That that's what they yeah. call it. yeah. Um, so we need to kind of get to the build up of 2010. Mm-hmm. So the yellow shirts. Now that Apisit is in power, they don't really need to do anything. Mm. So their rallies gradually subside and the red shirt rallies increase. Mm. And what happens is the yellow shirts are pretty much replaced by the military mm. in terms of who who the antagonists are on the street for the red shirts, right? Um, initially a lot of there's a lot of like marches from Isan down to Bangkok that happens mm. a few times and that there's a real gradual build up in tension there are there are increased violent incidents happening between the military and the red shirts and, and mm. this is general bubbling up of tension gradually right from about 2009-10 yeah I think it should be noted that uh, Abhisit has been accused for like uh he consult the military before he has the 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 government set up you know like who should be in the position mm. you know like he, I, I i i i didn't know that it is true you know we have no evidence but but there's been talk uh with with the red shirt like and 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 in the speech of the leaders that you know like uh this government has been established under the military i mean i would be shocked if that wasn't the case you know what i'm saying <laughs> So, I mean, that's what I was saying about Apisit. He's a UK Tory. Like, he just does what powerful people around him tell him to do. That's yeah. the role of a British conservative. That, that, that was really interesting and a very good description of him. You know, like, because, like, nobody here in Thailand would, 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 would ever, you know, like, describe yeah. him like that. Like, UK conservative Tories, like, typical one, you know. Yeah, interesting. And but it makes sense. And, you know, we have very similar... I'm sure people can tell what fucking country I'm from, from my accent. We have very similar um, political structures in the two countries. You know, we've got mm-hmm. this long, old monarchic tradition mm-hmm. and what have you. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can see how it could... Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it comes through the 2009, like, protest, like, red shirt protest. Mm. That, that one was very big. And then I believe that that year was the ASEAN summit that... Thailand hosts the ASEAN summit yeah. meeting in, in, in Pattaya and the hardcore red shirt protester like led by a former singer Mr. Arisman have you heard yeah. of him yeah he, he, he leads runs, yeah, yeah he, 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 he leads a lot of protesters and you know like ambush into the uh, the, the ASEAN summit meeting <laughs> and you yeah. know like uh, Mr. Abhisit the Prime Minister he, he was having a speech you know in the podium and then like Mr. Alisman was like yeah we're coming and then like you know Abhisit has to run away at the back of the hotel <laughs> and then like you know like jumping like, like, like you explained the scenario like jumping escape from the yellow uh, protester uh-huh. like this one yeah. Abhisit really jumped out uh, at the back of the hotel and then Arisman <laughs> takes the control of the podium and say that, you know, some people die in Bangkok, you know, the Prime Minister has to be responsible for it, you know. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's a long tradition of Thai leaders having to, like, run away. I'm thinking of, like, people as well only had to, like, jump off of a boat and swim back to shore after some... Yeah. Uh, they, tried, they tried to... Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Marshall... Back, we born from calm. Did, yeah. You know, he he jump out, uh, escape of the military, like navy. Thing. You gotta be, you gotta be a good escape artist to be Thai prime minister, as always. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, let's let's kind of get to like early 2010. Things actually, you know, you mentioned there the red shirt protests are getting more and more militant, mm-hmm. and this is where I just kind of want to throw out Gladio one more time because you got to imagine the red shirts were totally infiltrated mm-hmm. by the Thai intelligence services. I, I would, I mean, even a lot of like, they were proud that a lot of police defected into the red shirt movement famously. So how easy it would be for some, you know, some guy to go there undercover it would be so so easy especially so if they easy. had like if they were from Isan or something you know yeah, they would blend yeah. in straight away yeah you just wear a red shirt and you know like sneakers nobody knows yeah mm. yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and even then like to get I'm not even talking that though I'm talking about like getting into fairly high up positions within the red shirts would mm, be pretty mm. easy 
to mm-hmm, be honest. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. when you think about like the history of counter intelligence, oppo- like opposing movements like mm-hmm, this, mm-hmm, a, a mm-hmm. typical tactic would be to make them more militant. Mm-hmm, so you would mm-hmm. see like quite curious incidents in this era of the red shirts in in the kind of early 2010 late 2009 where suddenly there would like shooting would start out of mm, nowhere mm. you know and people oh the red shirts started shooting at the police or something or the military or something like that you know and mm, to me it's it stinks of infiltration yeah 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 it makes sense if you mention gladio because like before that before before the last episode we, we i haven't heard about the gladio from from you and and the plans mm. and infiltration strategy but but yeah, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense that uh, in, in the next year, you know, like 2009 has, has some incident, but, but not as high as the next year, 2010. And then like uh, there were like a black guy, you know, like black shirt people with guns, you know, like and, and they were running around a red shirt and the military uh, claimed that those guys were attacking the government, uh, the government agency, like like uh, like the military and stuff, you know, like uh, and that red shirt said that oh they're not one of they're ours. Nothing to do with us. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. nothing to do with us. And yeah, it it may be something, but there, there's a picture contained those those guys. Even even the courts uh, denied that they were not exist, but yeah. you know there were evidence. Yeah, it, it, yeah. yeah it, it could be anyone. You know, it could be anyone. I mean, it could be. There's, a, there's like a spectrum of this kind yeah. of counterintelligence stuff, right? So it could be something quite small, like just spying on them, or it could be something quite big, which was, you know, false flag acts, mm. you know. But but maybe, maybe you know, at first, you know, my first thought when I was a kid, I was like, okay, maybe these people were with, were actually with the red shirt and support them and be there in order to protect them from the military. But now, you know, I've heard the story of Gladio, maybe they were try to 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 insight yeah to to just try to make it like they were friends but they were just trying to create some incident that uh 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 yeah, provocateurs. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and wild. they do this. I just want to be clear as well. Like, this mm. is a really well-tested strategy mm. in everywhere else in the world. You know, you have a... Mm. Yeah, it ha- I, I literally have seen it happen in my own eyes in the UK. Mm. Mm. Like, you, you do get police undercover who act as pro- provocateurs. It, it's very real. Mm. So I have no doubt it happened in this protest movement. So, um, yeah, starting in, I think it was like, when did the occupation start of uh, of uh, the business district? I think it was in March, right, 2010. So there was a big march, as in like a big protest march that came down from Isan to Bangkok and they set up shop in the central business district mm-hmm. in central Bangkok. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was in, yeah, yeah, it was in early March. Mm. Um, and yeah, they, they start building barricades and they kind of set up like a commune in the middle of Bangkok. Yeah. It's really radical tactics. Yeah. Um, and uh, we mentioned before, Tyrell Habercorn. Uh, Tyrell Habercorn has this very interesting bit in her book where she talks about like how horrifying it was for the Bangkok elite who worked and shopped and lived in this area to mm-hmm. have to see all these filthy Isan, yeah. dark, you know, you know, I'm talking like brown skinned, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, you know, buffalo, as they would call them, you know, setting up a commune in the middle of the city. And this is where yeah. I start seeing like the class war aspects mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. OK, this looks this is fucking class war here. Um, and, and we'll get onto that more of that later. But yeah, they, they, they really did set up this kind of parallel micro state in mm-hmm. the middle of Bangkok. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, nowadays, those people who who were they they see these people, you know, they, those elites, those rich people see these red shirt people as a cockroach, you know. Yeah. Like, they don't even care. Yeah. Like, uh, like even you know, like spoiler alert again. Like right after the killing, you know, there were like big cleaning day right after. Like, yeah, how how fuck up the situation was, you know. So, yeah, I mean, like you said, you know. This I think this is like a very key class consciousness moment for mm. the red shirts and the yellow shirts because so like you said like the yellow shirts are, are finally like really coming into close contact for an extend, extended period of time mm. with these rural poor brown people which they had not at all been mm. used to they like 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 Habakkuk says you know 
they like them for their they're, they're supposed to they're, they're the backs of the nation mm. right but they're not supposed to be seen or heard mm. Mm. you know mm-hmm. that that's how they see them and and and, and it, it really created and then for the for the red shirts you know they got to see them mm. it was this 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 moment of real class consciousness in a sense because class consciousness is only class consciousness then this is for both sides if you actually see it as counter to the other class and they it was on such clear display in that occupation of the central business district mm. you know what mm. i'm saying mm, 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 mm. that makes sense yeah. that makes sense but yeah but uh there there were poor people from the rural area and they they feel like they they have more they have better life under under, under toxin you know administration well, I think they were right you know yeah <laughs> like yeah they have they they would have better be, better life with those uh like we talking about last time like last episode about the uh the the village fund you know those um uh 30 baht you know the healthcare maybe it's not universal uh, the economic was was better I, so they they I got- just wanted I just wanted to throw something else out which was you look at video let's remember as well isan was the real home of the communist party thailand insurgency and you watch a lot of videos of red shirts of that occupation and you see a lot of old like communist hats on and stuff like that like there was a real cool back yeah. element to that going on as well right yeah and 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 there was some some branch of of red shirt who actually wear the the red the red star Hat. Yeah, 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 a yeah. lot, a lot. Yeah, a lot yeah. of them, and and then those branch was like not not like not the mainstream red shirt like not to you know they, yeah. they won't only talk about democracy and parliamentary politics, but they were like you know like more and more radical about you know like even even to the revolution, even to the yeah. to, to something like and it would feel that way, you know, you're occupying the capital. Yeah, that it feels like revolution. It yeah potentially could have been one. But yeah, so it, but 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 yeah yeah sure sure it, it it was a problem about 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 yeah you you could say class consciousness the main uh the main offer from 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 those protests were like uh, amend the constitution you know yeah they had quite reasonable demands like, that's the thing like only amend the constitution it it yeah. is not even the higher stakes or high no they weren't even like, really calling for apisit to resign on yeah. mass even like yeah. yeah like and 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 there were only little thing and then like and and but 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 there were strong language you know during the protest like you know like sure. com- coming from uh your home in 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 the northern east or the north and then bring out one liter of the of the fuel you know like oil And then mm. if it didn't work out, we'll burn the city into ground, you know. Yeah. Like uh, may- maybe those were just a bluff, you know. Like they didn't mm. actually gonna burn. Well, anything. we'll see what happens when they get cleared out. <laughs> um, so yeah, we should you know get into the next part, the the very tragic part. Um, I guess we'll start the timeline on the 10th of April, mm. uh, which is when the military unsuccessfully tried to clear the red shirts. Mm. Uh, several people died. And then from then on, there was nine days of very fierce fighting. So the military really brought in the heavy, or pretty almost artillery. Like they had APCs, which if people don't know, they're kind of like they're basically tanks. They're like armored vehicles with guns on top. Um, of course, they had you know helicopters and what have you, and and live weapons fire as well, like M16s, shotguns, like serious. Yeah, sniper rifles, you know, like serious killing mm-hmm. machines. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas the vast majority of red shirts had uh, fireworks mm. and slingshots, and that that was pretty much it. Yeah. Um, the fighting tactics were quite profound as well, and we, we should talk about Suedang as well, right? Yeah, uh, I think, uh, but but yeah, I'd like to add that before before the 10th of April 2010, which is the beginning of the attack, there there was a talk. You know, like negotiation between between the the leaders of the red shirt and the head of the government. Uh, Mr. Pisit himself, you know, has been sit like opposite uh, Mr. Wila Musikapong Datupon and 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 Natawut uh, Saikua. You know, they they were like talk like three people and three people 
uh, and and they were like shaking hands, you know, like talking about the solutions. If uh, how what what do you want, and how what does it take for for you to to like stop, you know, like and you know there, there was a talk before, and then uh, I didn't know it didn't work out or not, you know, like because because uh, Natawood were like uh, he he said that during the way that he goes back to the to the area of 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 the gathering, you know, there was already a, a fire. You know, so because of that, it 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 was never a deal. You know, it was just like a time buying, and and mm. you know, like just just to tell them to surrender, but they won't. You know, but and the government yeah. already have the operation that that uh, that that will clear out the the protesters, and and even before that, you know, like uh, 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 the there, there were there were report there were like bombs report in several places in Bangkok, mm. like M. Mm. M's uh, M seventy nine, like a bomb, you know, like like not a, not like RPG, but but somehow a a, a bomb, you know, uh, around that, and and the uh, red shirt w- was accused of 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 committed that, and then like, Gladio, yeah yeah something like that, you know, uh, and and you, you heard uh uh Sedang. Mm-hmm. you just mentioned him right um uh, uh Sedang, uh, uh Major General Katia. Uh, he, 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 he act like being friend with 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 the red shirt movement, right? And mm. he, he wear his military costume. He got guns, and he has men like trained men under his command, you know. And he even he even trained the red shirt guard, you know. Yeah, and he he, he was, trained them in their fighting tactics supposedly. Yeah, like and he he was uh, accused of, of committing those several bombs around Bangkok mm. but, but but nobody oh. knows like if it was true or not or, or maybe it's it was Gladio who knows and then and then like he he, he got shot you know he, he got snipe yep yeah he got snipe like uh, very fucking suspicious yeah very fucking suspicious of who did that like uh, and, and it's about it, it, it's from the high ground you know like some people said it's from the uh, the, the sky train track you know, yeah, and and the sky train oh, was we'll, was used to. Uh, we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get, hold on. We'll get into that. Mm-hmm. So so I just want to say like um, yeah, like we were saying, there was this intense fighting uh, which culminated on April the nineteenth when there was a full on assault by the Thai military. Um, speaking of the sky trains, um, there was a Wat a temple right in the middle of where all this was going down, what Patum Wanaram. Yeah. And that was declared by the government as a safe zone mm-hmm. for for anybody, for police, well, supposedly for, for military and for, for protesters. Mm-hmm. And obviously it was mostly or entirely full of protesters and the monks who lived there as well as uh, medical, emergency medical staff. Yeah. And I, I'm just going to say it, like the military went up on the SkyTrain station, you know, like raised up, and they were sniping directly into the temple, mm. and they killed, I think, was it seven or nine or something like that people, uh, including one medical uh, staff. aid, what, aid, huh? Medical staff, like a nurse. Yeah, one, yeah, she she was a nurse, yeah. Um, so, I mean, that, that was, you know, pretty horrific, and, you know, obviously nobody was ever blamed for that. Um, a lot of people died in the fighting, um, and eventually the red shirts were cleared out. And while retreating, and I think this is, t- you know, our foundational question: was this a class war? While retreating, the red shirts burnt down a whole bunch of buildings. And you look at what they burnt down, right? Banks, the stock exchange, Central World Mall. These buildings have sim. Oh, come on, you're a Zizekian, right? These this has symbolic significance, no? Yeah, um, and 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 so I, I think a few years ago the court said that the 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 it's been sentenced that that it was not committed by the red shirt in Central World. Oh really? Yes, yes, I yes. See yes. That. It's, oh, not, sure. it's not. It's so, not. Mm-hmm. Well, they're saying that the then who did it? No, they didn't say. But but it, it said that it it didn't commit by the red shirt. Because like it was an accident or something? No, it's not an accident. There were definitely somebody intended to do it you know like the oh you saying that was some gladio shit oh i, I didn't say it was gladio but it was <laughs> it, it was a camera you know it was a cctv seeing that some people carry those you know like a tank 
with, with your fuel and then burn burn some section of Central World, not Jesus, all. This is you so know, and, and then like and then uh, Lido Lido Cinema, uh, it was uh-huh. the uh, uh, old uh, yeah, theater yeah, in beautiful. in Bangkok. Yeah. yeah, in front of Sayam Palakon, you know, was burned yeah. down too. You know, and yeah. uh, and then a lot of places in Bangkok was burned, like like just like you said, but there was no evidence that the red shirt is done it you know like so it's not maybe they did maybe they didn't so it was chaotic you know like uh, and the right, mili- right. military was the one who hold the strong weapons right and then but but maybe uh there was a parallel protest around thailand including ubon lachatani uh, the the province in the east end of 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 of, of the northern east you know and and that and that uh province was Really, the the, the uh, town hall of Ubon Rajasthan. Hold on, I thought this was in Udon, not Ubon. Ubon, Ubon. M- maybe in Udon too. In in, in mm. yeah, in, in in Chiang Mai also protest, but mm. there was only burned the, the tire. You know, not yeah, not 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 the Chiang Mai is always absurdly civil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah, but 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 Udon, uh, Ubon, Ubon. You know, I I I went to Ubon a few months oh. ago, and and they told us that yeah, this is the. One of the red church's capital city, and they oh, of course. They, they burned that that town hall across us. I was like, okay, that was historical, right, right. You know, yeah. I, I just want to mention that. I mean, mm-hmm. of the confirmed deaths, there were seventy nine civilians mm-hmm. and fifty one still missing officially. Mm-hmm. But you know, yeah. Um, and eight soldiers died, and yeah, and, uh, quite a few of those soldiers died by friendly fire as well. It should be uh, out. Yeah, I. Yeah, but 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 I think question is like uh, people who go on hiding in a temple, like like you mentioned before, like uh, and that mean like people who were surrender, right? Like they don't want mm. to fight anymore. Like uh, then why the hell would they, mm. they go hiding in some places, right? If you want to fight back, yeah, and and why do you still kill the people who already surrender? You know, this is like this is not this is not operation. This is not how. How, how, how the procedure works, right? Well, I can answer that question. Like, I can answer that question when talking about the aftermath. Uh-huh. So, what happens after this mass killing, this mass violence, yeah. burning of buildings, what have you? An eerie quiet kind of descends on the country. Like nobody wants to see this shit happen again on both sides. Mm-hmm. Like the red shirts, they really felt that they suffered mm-hmm. too much. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I'm just going to run through this. Like, Abby Sit denies any wrongdoing, mm-hmm. obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and, and you know what? Can I get back to this, like, a little bit after just to see how the rest plays out? So, sure. so we've mentioned Pur Thai a few times. Pur Thai replaced the People's Power Party. They're the new Thai Rak Thai, still around today. In 2011, elections are announced, and uh, Ying Luck, who is Taxin's sister, proxy season continues, mm-hmm. uh, will run for prime minister. She wins, of course, because Apisit is wildly unpopular. Just quick shout out, Apisit. My God, man, you're a physical conservative. You know, people are like, oh, conservatives, you may not like them, but they're good for the economy. Mm-hmm. Unemployment increased by 63% under Apisit. Mm-hmm. Remarkable. He'll blame the red shirts for fucking up Bangkok, but mm-hmm. whatever. That's bro. Anyway, so Ying Luck uh, wins the election by a landslide, as taxi and allied park allied groups tend mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. You know, and once again, PAD reactivated. I just want to run through the shit because it's bringing me down. Um, PAD are reactivated. They've got the playbook by now. Mass process. Um, so Ying Luck is prime minister only for a few years. So she was elected in 2011 by 2013. Absolute fever pitch of protests, very similar to the first time taxing got cooed. Um, it's triggered by Ying Luck was doing an amnesty bill for those who were prosecuted after the 2006 coup. And, um, you know, the PAD thought this was a way for taxing to return to Thailand, which might be a thing. Then there was the whole rice, the rice buying selling thing, which is so unbelievably boring. I don't want to get into it. Um, although it did, you know, it was a bit tragic for some people. But uh, yeah. anyway, um, and so basically on the 8th of December, all Democrat politicians uh, or MPs rather mass resign from Parliament. Ying Luck calls for re-elections. 
And then this is this is a real shift in yellow shirt mindset, right? Which is they realize we really will never win an election fairly. It's just not going to happen, mm-hmm. right? The only way we've got in power in the past whatever decade mm-hmm. is by default when Abby Sit managed to get into power. Mm-hmm. So you see this real shift in yellow shirt mindset that we've talked about on the podcast before, where mm-hmm. they just go into descent of becoming like true feudalists, true. Ah, we just want the king to take care of, to appoint someone to take care of everything. That's all we really want. Um, so basically, they and they they give up any pretense of democracy. They the Democrat Party boycott the elections and the PAD block voting as as best they can. Uh, they have this whole shutdown Bangkok thing as well, which I should have mentioned. By the way, once I saw somebody in like a very like working class restaurant, like. Samsung in Chiang Mai mm. wearing a, a shut down Bangkok t-shirt and mm-hmm. everyone was just like fucking glaring at her. Yeah. It was very funny. Um, yeah, they, they anyways. I think they did change yeah. the name a little bit, you know, like before Ying Lak win the election. Okay, let, let me do a little bit of a recap that, okay, go that the, the, uh, the red shirt continues to have the movement on, you know, like right after the... <sighs> Kind of not not to the same ferocity as yeah. If that's a word. So the uh, the election campaign by Pure Thai Party for 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 Ying Lak for the the new uh, the 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 election in two thousand eleven, uh, there was a report that if if any uh, province has the following score, you know, like and you know the taxing afraid that okay we may not get enough of the vote for this district you know mm-hmm. he will just do the video video link again you know like to oh, the well, election show campaign. up yeah like Just show like up like by friendly. like like yeah. hello everybody and then like and if it's in in the northern part he will just speak the northern language you know like you know that 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 is his finishing move like in every province that he did that you know they won you know it because, works because he's incredibly popular, you know. Yeah, he was popular, yeah. and then like after the uh, the Ying Lak got uh, to be the prime minister, there was uh, there was a protest. Uh, first, there were uh, say say I, you know, he was former military. He was the owner of the boxing club, uh, mm-hmm. and then he has the protest for like two days. You know, because it didn't fire up, you know, because like n- not a lot of people show up and and, you know, people were just not into that. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, like yeah. we, we don't really care. And, and then the next we just had an election. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and then and then the next year is the uh, the uh, the mass thing, the V for Vendetta mass. Mm. Yeah, if you, if you remember that, like that one was suck, you know, like nobody cares. Like they they were talking yes. about the Jam Nam Khao, you know, the <laughs> the 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 rice uh, thing, the rice policy, saying that you know, like yeah. uh, those farmer didn't get the 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 money for for selling rice. Uh, that yeah. was the uh, government's fault, and, and nobody was into that anymore because, like, uh, you know, like, are you a farmer? No, and then the real farmer, they were happy about that. And what the fuck are yeah. you doing? You know, like, and then like, it, it, actually, to be fair, there 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 were some farmers. Yeah, I don't know. I just know from personal experience. Okay, like okay. I have met farmers in the north who were quite mm-hmm. pissed off about that. Yeah, yeah, and then and okay, if we want to talk about it later, it's about the uh, policy people and the people who are in the. In, in in practice so yeah you know like like okay it, it's not important okay yeah. um but but this thing is in in the next year you know like the third year run of ying lux uh, administration it was um uh, that you, you said it was pad but yeah they they changed the name into right. uh Gopo you know in thai there yeah. was a prp or whatever you know i want to remember the name because it's all bullshit and like there were Zutep, yeah yeah like and and then like and this one you said that it shift from the old one that what the yellow shirt back then. yeah mm. yellow shirt back then uh in 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 2005 2006 there were a people's movement you know there were some kind of uh you can call it like that the, the the mass movement that actually uh that actually is the people power who, who aim for something who aim for justice yeah even if you know, they're middle class it is still people power yeah it, it's still people power yeah. and 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 the and and it's like it's like in 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 the dark may in 
in May uh, 1992. Yeah, something like that, you know, like because of the government is suck, you know, and, and you cannot accept it anymore with, with the reason enough that you can go out and you can shout the word democracy to throw them out. But, but not like Suteb one, not, not like in the 2013. Actually, at first, it, it, it's not fire up, you know, like not a lot of people come, but right after the bill, the amnesty bill from uh, the, to, uh, the thing, including Taksin too. So it mm-hmm. like trigger from people who already hate Taksin and they were like, okay, what are you doing? You try to bring him back, you know, like I, I think this is the wrong step for Taksin to, to pass this bill in one night, mm. you know, like yeah. if, if he didn't do that, the protest from, from Suteb and from the, 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 the new PAD will not be trigger. Mm. And, so, and then, are you saying that the the new PAD that was less of a people's power movement and more of like an elites working together through kind of political machinations? Or yes, uh, uh-huh. uh, okay. Oh, let, let's be clear a little bit that I, I think I, I call them later on like people's party because they they were people fighting for for people's right for people's uh, power. Uh, to support democracy, let's say, you know, but, but here they didn't, they didn't fight for democracy. They just say that the, the constitution and the electoral system, the political system is not fair. They didn't even explain yeah. how, how, how it isn't fair. They said it, it is messed up. So we need to reform before the next elec- election. And they don't even believe in the election you know, like, okay. Because well, they know they're not going to win. Yeah, yeah, that, that's why. They, they know they're not going to win. So they, they don't even talk about the system anymore. They were, they were just like, okay, we need to overthrow Ying Lak like we did to Taksin, no matter what. Again, like, okay, so we need to, we don't allow elections. That's, that, that's why the uh, election, um, like the, the second election of Ying Lak, when, when, when she dissolved the parliament and, and set up the new election, there were... Uh, these protesters uh, covered the the, uh, the 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 polling station that not allow yeah. people to go in to vote. And then when when some people even go inside to vote, those protesters were like you know like laying down, you know, not letting yeah. people step in to vote. So yeah, yeah that and, and not to mention the in step with the Democrat Party and a mm. few other minor, mm-hmm. more right wing parties who just boycotted it. Yeah, yeah, they boycotted it again. So it, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so so we can see the difference between between the uh, the, uh, the 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 old one, the, the old generation. In their ideology. Yeah, yeah. So so this one, they just say it out loud, straightforward that they don't want this system. We need to reform. And what what, what kind of reform? You know, like. Those uh, academics who support them, you know, maybe go on TV for an interview and then like, like Solayut, you know, like the famous mm-hmm. uh, uh, TV, uh, he, he just asked them like, oh, uh, what, what, what is your strategy on reforming? They were like, oh, mm-hmm. I, I don't know about that. There, there were a lot of people who are working on that strategy. Like, and then that's all. And then still, you know, elites, middle class, people who claim that they were educated still support this. Uh, protests you know and well you know i just i want to say like Mm -hmm. it makes sense like they are looking out for their class interests they're not Mm -hmm. wrong yeah i mean they they have an ideology Mm -hmm. of which the inherently reactionary ideology of domination Mm -hmm. and they Mm -hmm. want it that way yeah they like they like these hierarchies both economic and social yeah you know the fucking base and superstructure yeah which mm-hmm. they use to have their position in society which is an incredibly comfortable one mm-hmm. it makes sense for them they know that if they they know that if they allow even basic liberal democracy mm-hmm. to to exist in thailand they're gonna lose some of that social mm-hmm. and economic uh, power that they have so and they they can't they 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 don't want to lose it so that's it yeah. either you can mm-hmm. or you could all you can do in that situation is basically revert to, to feudalism yeah i mean uh, but i mean my point is they're just hypocrite you know oh of course they're hypocrites yeah but uh, no but at least <laughs> something which i find curious mm-hmm. is like at least now like they're being open I think they're less hypocritical now. Mm, yeah. like they're being open about it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I almost admire that more than the people who are like, oh, we believe in democracy, but, mm-hmm. you know, 
only if we win, you know, like, yeah. yeah. So of course we know how things end for the Taxin clan. Um, after that failed attempt at having elections, there was a coup and that's how you get General Prayut who still exists mm -hmm. to this day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a concept of returning happiness, you know, like, like in. Oh in, God, the Prayu. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make Thailand happy. Again. Yeah. Like oh. it, in Ying Lak's time, it, it was like a very tragic. It was like disastrous for, you know, elites and middle class in Bangkok. So like they even called Ying Lak a whore. You know, like yeah. even Apisit himself, who deny any responsibility uh, from uh, from from any action that he has, like, and he said, like, unfortunately, <laughs> some people die. You know, that's totally bullshit. And then, like, after he even he even called Ying Lak a whore. Yeah, like, I I mean, they're they're really fucking awful people. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think mm -hmm. something we want I I want to make really clear and go back to that earlier question, which was, you know, what was the point of killing all those innocent people? Mm -hmm. Well, look, what happened to Prayut? He's still mm. here. Mm -hmm. The red shirts, they learned their lesson, mm -hmm. which is if you fuck with Bangkok, mm. you're, you're going to get killed or someone, you mm. know, your friend will get killed, your family member will get killed. Mm. This is the thing about insurgency, mm. which I think a lot of people don't really understand, mm -hmm. which is like, mm -hmm. I'm not claiming to be some, you know, expert or whatever, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. you have any kind of insurgent movement in a country, if it goes too far, your friends are gonna die. You maybe you don't die. You're willing to put your life on the line, right? But are you willing to put your brother's life, your sister's life, your mother's life on the mm. line? Mm. Probably not. Maybe not for taxing. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe maybe not against Prayut. I don't know. Mm. I I think it really like, and this is really sad because you know, let's face it. Like he taught them a lesson. Yeah. So 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 you're saying it's like it's a threat. Yeah. Mm. And I think it worked. I mean, also, let's be clear, like, after Prayut got into power, he did a really effective system of breaking down any of the old red shirt apparatus. Mm. Like, a lot of people were arrested. A lot of people were beaten up, intimidated. Mm. There was the radio station network that I don't think we've even mentioned, which was quite a big deal in mm. Isan, mm. which was the red shirt radio. Those mm. were all destroyed. Right. Equipment was destroyed, and people were arrested for that. Um, so I think, you know, that that massacre in bangkok on top of, of of complete you know completely innocent civilians in a lot of cases on top of that crackdown post prayu is what really took the life out of the red shirt movement hmm. Hmm. depressingly yeah yeah and good summary um, i think thank you mm, good Makes summary um so i think you know i i want to talk about the Gengit thesis right mm -hmm. was this a class war I think also wait one more thing before that let me, let me and just 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 to if you want you know where did the yellow shirts kind of go from here we have an entire episode dedicated to the contemporary <laughs> yellow shirts uh you can go back and find that i think it's called like salim's minions and yellow shirts or something yeah. that's, that's what it's called with gong so you can go back and listen to that <laughs> okay um to see how the yellow shirt story continued but uh this this is the end of the red shirt story mm -hmm. um pretty much but just just to go on to you know or go back rather to our very first question you know was this a class war the Gengit thesis so Gengit Ajahn Gengit professor at Chiang Mai University mm -hmm. he proposes like over time it became more of one so that that you know you gain class there's this kind of Marxist theory or Leninist perhaps that you know you get class consciousness through collective struggle and what is collective struggle if not going down to the capital city holding it hostage starting a commune in the you know economic center mm. and fighting the state with your comrades you know and so something else he says in that article which was written quite a long time ago I think um, is that you know where this movement you know a mass movement like this is not something which necessarily has like a straight line perhaps like we could see something else develop in 10 years from now which came from this development of class consciousness and you know maybe it'll look different but it will have that history that but that will be a significant part of its history into getting where it is now um 
for me, I think it was a class war. It, there, there are social aspects to it as well, absolutely. There always are, right? But if you look at pretty much any other kind of class war in history, this follows remarkably similar lines. And, you know, you said, you said it was more of a status thing. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, you know, what is status if not economic? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. what percentage of status is economic? A large fucking part. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. And, and, and just another thing I wanted to say, like, We've spoken a lot about the Red Shirts and Desan, and uh, our next episode is going to be with two of our guys from uh, Isan. We're going to be taught. It's going to be an Isan episode. Mm-hmm. It's going to be great. So, yeah, check that out. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Gong, anything you want to add? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you in, 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 the, in the part you said that it was, it was about the different economic background from... from, from from people from uh you know uh, uh from 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 the rural area and, and the urban area and yeah there 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 uh there always will be an exception right and 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 yeah if, if you want to talk uh, if you want to treat it as a class conflict yeah it, it's it's always be you know and yeah and for sure it, it is it is comes from the different economic status and, it, uh, and is not all history that of class struggle? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. All right, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. All right. Sure. Call it a day? Yeah. All right. Uh, so thank you, listeners, for joining us for this epic two-parter. Um, so Mai will be back next week. And um, <laughs> Gong... Thank you so much for your insight, your expertise, and your painfully, at times, exhausted <laughs> knowledge of complex, you know, Thai politics minutiae. I have no idea how you hold it in your head I, all at once. I feel very... Like, you're not looking at notes. Like, I just want to... Like, I'm lo- I've been looking at Gong this whole time. Uh, I, He's hardly looking at... I, I look at your hardly. notes. Like, like what, what topics oh. are, are you going to So you look at say? my shitty notes, and then you've still got all that stuff in your head. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I, I'm trying to... Okay, well, what is about... Uh, how you can you live know, like that, I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you once again for your expertise and uh, we'll have you back very shortly sure sure all right bye bye folksเพชรชื่อกองเลือกไกลวัฒนธรรมไทยเพียวปลอดภัยไทยแลนด์ไทยรักไทยหัวใจคือประชาชนเลือกพรรคไทยรักไทยต้องเลือกพรรคไทยร